Ken Block is an inspiration to all petrol heads. A guy that could do almost anything with a car. Insane control, total bravery, and unbelievable skill. There were so many aspects to his professional life. Shoe designer, world rally driver, X Games competitor, designer of epic cars, and of course, YouTube sensation. For me personally, he wasn't just a true racer. He was a pioneer of motorsport content creation, and he showed us all what was possible. So we're going to go over his life show what made him so great, as well as some of his incredible cars. You may know Ken Block from watching the WRC, the dirt franchise of video games, or the incredible Jim Gymkhana videos. But Ken Block actually started out in life wanting to be a skateboarder, growing up in Long Beach, California. But once his family moved to San Diego, or the middle of nowhere as he called it, he started to mess around with dirt bikes. This would start his obsession with extreme sports that would define his life. He was always a fan of rallying. As a teenager, he would catch up with the WRC at any chance he could, which was tricky as it wasn't televised in the US back then, something Ken would later change. The jumps, the dirt, the guts of the drivers and seeing normal cars being pushed to the limit absolutely captivated him. And most importantly, they made him think he could one day do the same, something he never felt for categories like F1. And just as millions around the world today see Ken, there was one particular driver that inspired him, Colin McRae. And you can see Colin in the way that Ken Block would approach anything he did foot to the floor and always dialing it up to 11. They would actually later become good friends, sharing a pure enjoyment for the car itself and for having fun with cars. And with Ken, this incredible spirit wasn't just with driving. It was in all of his other pursuits as well. Before all of the racing and the fame, in 1994, Ken co-founded a shoe company with his friends Damon Way and Clayton Blen. They wanted to create a shoe for skateboarders that just wasn't available at the time. Together, they created DC Shoes. They would go on to be a massive success with Ken at the heart of it all. The clever advertising strategies that Ken helped to create align them with pro athletes. They would sponsor these athletes and celebrate them in their adverts. These are people that other people aspire to be like. And a way to do this was to wear DC shoes. This would be how Ken would meet a lifelong friend and collaborator, motocross legend Travis Pastrana. DC shoes ended up being so popular that by 2004, they weren't just for skateboarders and they were generating over $100 million in revenue each year. This attracted the attention of Quicksilver, who bought the company for $87 million and made Ken a very rich man. But of course, Ken Block didn't sit back and relax. He decided that at the age of 37, without any competitive experience, he was going to become a rally driver something he had always dreamed of since Colin McRae captured his imagination. And Ken set his target high. He wanted to race with his friend Travis Pastrana. Unsurprisingly, Ken would achieve his aim of racing with Travis when he convinced Subaru to let him drive their iconic Impreza WRX STI in Rally America in 2005. And luckily for Ken, he felt at home immediately. He finished an incredible seventh in his first ever event, which was a 126 mile snow covered stage, surprising many with his natural talent. He would go on to win Rally America Rookie of the Year as well. This would also impress Subaru, who would keep on providing him with cars until 2010, sponsoring Ken and Travis in what became known as Subaru Rally Team USA. While Ken would keep on driving in that competition until 2014, it was his friend Travis that would take four consecutive titles between 2006 and 2009. Another event that would define Ken Block's career was the X Games, the extreme sports competition in the world. Ken would compete in nine of them, taking five medals home with him in the rally car event. But the 2007 competition must have topped the lot. He would race and beat his hero Colin McRae in the X Games 13 rally car special, pushing the Scotsman into a flip in the process, and Ken would compete in rallying until 2018, making it all the way to the WRC, the pinnacle 
of the sport. Not bad for someone who didn't start until they were 37 years old. And it's worth noting that I've actually coached a lot of amateur drivers that start racing later in their life, as with Ken. And it's a real challenge for these drivers to get up to a professional level and compete with those that have been karting or driving since they were very small. And it goes to show Ken's raw natural talent. He was seriously impressive. During his time in the WRC, he would become only the fourth American in history to score points. And in fact, more Americans have actually been to the moon than that. In the process, his wider profile brought the sport into the mainstream, attracting new American fans to the sport and created a new generation of rally fans. But Ken didn't just take part in world rallying. Like everything else in his life, if he was going to do it, he was going to do it properly. So in 2010, he left Subaru to join forces with Ford and founded the Monster World Rally Team driving their Ford Fiesta RS WRC. His team would compete in the WRC and World Rallycross Championships, scoring points, podiums and wins until Ken hung up his gloves in 2018. Meanwhile, like his days at DC Shoes, Ken would use his shrewd marketing brain to push the boundaries of motorsport marketing. He would change the team's name to Hoonigan Racing Division to match his newly founded YouTube channel. This was because of the success of a series of videos that Ken had produced to satisfy an itch. The same itch he shared with Colin McRae just to have fun with a car, to test it to its limits without the restraints of competition, to express his passion in his own way. This became Ken Block's Jim Carner. In 2008, Ken posted a video on the Ken Block Racing YouTube channel titled DC Shoes Ken Block Jim Carner Practice. This video showed Ken blasting his 530 horsepower Subaru Impreza around a disused airfield in California. It's four minutes of high octane drifting donuts and close calls with all sorts of obstacles, including a man on a Segway, all strung together with seemingly effortless precision and touch. As a driver myself, I just love to watch the car control here. And of course, this video went viral. Over 16 million people watched it, but this was only the beginning. Ken would go on to create a new genre of online video content which carved his name into motorsport and internet legends. Over the next 14 years and across five YouTube channels, Ken would release 11 more Jim Karna, two Climb Karna, and one Electric Karna videos, sometimes sharing the wheel with his old friend, Travis Pastrana. These videos would amass over 637 million views and send Ken and his friends all over the world to some of the biggest cities and most dangerous roads. It also led to some epic cars, and I definitely have a favorite, but we'll get into that a little bit later. The sheer production of these videos was crazy. Ken and his team shut down areas of at least four cities. They even had an argument with the Australian government about what they were allowed to do in Sydney for Gymkhana 9. And you might be thinking, well, there isn't a Gymkhana in Australia. Well, that's because the stunts Ken proposed weren't deemed safe enough to be done in Australia at all. So Gymkhana 9 was actually reset in Buffalo. Speaking of dangerous stunts, one of the most famous ones came at the end of Gymkhana 5 when Ken is pictured doing donuts on a barge in the middle of the Golden Gate Strait in San Francisco. However, this was never meant to actually happen. The plan was for Ken to drift and do donuts with the Golden Gate Bridge in the background, but a badly timed cruise ship coming into the port ruined the shot, until it improved it. Luckily, a crew member had rented a barge just in case, and they just let Ken's creative juices flow to produce one of the most iconic Jim Carner stunts. Now, onto the cars. Ken had quite the garage at his disposal, and there was one that really stood out to me. He started out using the Subaru Impreza WRX for his Gymkhanas, but as his partnerships changed and moved to the Ford Fiesta, a WRC car that Block labeled the hybrid function Hoon vehicle, these two cars with his distinctive black, white, and fluorescent green livery looked so cool being blasted around sideways in these early videos but not quite as cool as Ken Block's craziest creation and my favorite, the Hoonicorn. Based off the 1965 Ford Mustang, in its final version, this custom-made monster had a 6.7-liter twin-turbocharged V8 engine that generated an incredible 1,400 horsepower. It featured a six-speed manual transition, four-wheel drive, and it could hit 60 in 1.8 seconds. It even had custom drift tires that produced even more smoke than normal. You can see this car in all its glory in Gymkhana 7, 
but my favourite is his climb corner, blasting this monster up Pike's Peak, one of the most dangerous hill climbs in the world. And Ken decided to make it even harder. But just two weeks ago in early 2023, Ken passed away in a horrific accident whilst racing around on a snowmobile on his ranch in Utah. The motoring world lost a true trailblazer, an inspiration to petrol heads and content creators alike. Myself and the team here at Driver61 are massive Ken Block fans, and we will miss him and what he did. He has left an incredible legacy in motorsport and on YouTube, so go back and watch some of his greatest drifting moments here. Ken's hero was Colin McRae, and we made a similar video about him here. Thank you very much, and see you next time.